Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for this webinar. Today I'm joined by Hugh Rees, a field application scientist at SPT LabTech, who will be exploring the benefits of miniaturization in NGS library preparation and how you can get more value for your money using Mosquito. As a member of our North American FAS team, Hugh is responsible for providing expert training and applications advice to users of our liquid handling solutions, including Mosquito, Firefly and Dragonfly. Before we begin, just to note that there will be time for Q&A at the end, so if you do have a question for Hugh, please post it in the Q&A panel and we'll get to those after the presentation. Now, over to you, Hugh. Thank you, Rachel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to maximise your return of investment through miniaturisation. SPT LabTech has been around for around 20 years, and it's well known for designing robust and reliable instruments across liquid handling, structural biology, and sample management. Our goal is to enable life scientists through collaboration to, and deep application knowledge to lead and accelerate research and make a difference together. SPT LabTech is based in Melbourne, UK, but has bases and operates globally, um, facilitating research around the world. In today's discussion, uh, first thing I'm going to do is explain to you why we want to miniaturize. I'll be talking primarily about our nanoliter liquid handling machine, the Mosquito, as shown here. Then I will explain to you how the Mosquito can miniaturize next generation sequencing library preps, and then how quickly does the Mosquito pay for itself in these processes. So just a very quick introduction to next generation sequencing. So NGS library prep normally has several key parts, but the key steps which require liquid handling are shown here on the right. Almost all kits require some sort of DNA end preparation where you modify the ends to make them suitable for sequencing. And then a cleanup step where you tidy up from the enzymes and whatever you use to do this initial end prep step. Then after PCR, the next step is the cleanup after the PCR before you put your samples and your libraries into a next generation sequencing instrument. So that's just generally the layout of many of these kits. They're ideal for automation because they're extremely laborious and time consuming to do. Doing these kits by hand, especially for plates, can take hours and hours of precise, focused work and can be very difficult uh, for people to learn how to do. Uh, experienced lab bench workers who are able to perform these kits rapidly and consistently and effectively are very hard to find sometimes and it's uh, therefore an ideal process to automate to remove some of that requirement of skill and allow them, the scientists to work in other parts of the bench in the lab uh, to, to keep your research going. Well, automating liquid handlers are also able to pipette down to volumes below what a handheld pipette can do. So sub microliter is very hard to do consistently um, with a handheld pipette, but with automation doing that can be consistent and realized, um, it, it can be realized that can be done. Um, so, Automation really just makes your bench workers able to focus more on actually doing the science rather than repeatedly pipetting and spending hours at the bench doing this monotonous task. So why do you want to miniaturize NGS library preparation? The first thing is it simply makes your money go further. Library prep kits tend to have very high costs for sam per sample. They are, they are expensive generally to produce because they require protein engineering and all these other research to make. But when they're sold, they tend to be pretty expensive per sequencing sample, although they are very effective. The Mosquito and why you can miniaturize, miniaturizing any of these kits in general can help you significantly lower volumes per reaction and make the kits process more samples than they would normally be able to do, saving you money. Or because these are automated, they also drive your laboratory throughput. Uh, with miniaturization, you can go from 96 down to 384 and it reduces your reliance on manual pipetting and also gives you walk away time and increases the throughput of samples in your workflow. Substantial miniaturization can be achieved for high read depth kits. So for example, the ADB Next Ultra 2 DNA kit can be miniaturized about tenfold uh, on the Mosquito using lower reagent volumes per sample. Uh, that various other kits, which I'll describe later, also can be miniaturized to this sort of extent. But just to give you an idea of how much money you can save, you can make your kit go 10 times further with miniaturization. 
Now I'm going to talk about the nanoliter liquid handling instrument that we uh, manufacture and serve, service, the Mosquito. So the Mosquito is shown here. Um, its tips are loaded on this sort of uh, wheel, this spool at the top, which feed through the instrument into this pipetting head shown here. And this pipetting head can aspirate dispense across this deck in any of these five positions. A mosquito tip is a positive displacement tip, meaning there's no air interface between the liquid and the tip. Uh, the tip is steel, uh, stainless steel, and the outside sheath is high density polyethylene. Uh, when the tips aspirate and dispense, they get clamped on this top part of the tip and pulled up and pushed down to do the aspirate and re dispense respectively. The volume of a mosquito tip is, point, uh, is up to five microliters, and we can aspirate and dispense down to 0.5 microliters. There is a version of the mosquito called the low volume, which does 25 nanoliters to 1.25 microliters. But for the purpose of this webinar, I'm, I'm predominantly talking about the high volume 0.5 to 5 microliter mosquito. Um, it has zero chance of uh, cross contamination because uh, the spool, the tips feed through the instrument in a one way direction. And uh, by changing tips away from the location that you're afraid of contaminating, you can reduce the chance of contamination to virtually zero. It is extremely negligible bird volumes, which I'll show in a video later. Uh, because it's able to contact dispense and aspirate from the very bottom of the well. Um, it's very gentle on GDNA and enzymes, which is very important for a lot of NGS library preps. And in general, the mosquito will be very gentle on your macromolecules and will not disturb them too much. Because of the positive displacement, you avoid cavitation and vortexing, meaning you don't get air interfaces introduced, which can really wreak havoc on enzymes. It's very accurate for low and high viscosity liquids. So very viscous master mixes or very volatile uh, mixtures like ethanol won't cause problems for the mosquito either. There is a quick video of uh, showing some of that work. So the mosquito is going to aspirate this blue dye and dispense two columns here. It's displaying 16 tips right now. Um, you can have another pitch, which is eight tips. So it's also able to work in a 96 format as well. But here, the 16 tips is ideal for 384 the speed so it's performing a mix uh, notice how it's able to aspirate from these these new drops and find the old drops with extreme precision and do the mix on top of them this next video is going to show you some uh, very low dev volume so it's going right to the bottom of the well and it's aspirating and there is a negligible dead volume The Mosquito uh, HV Genomics also comes with a full software package to facilitate your work. Um, it contains wizards that have simplified setup for common protocols that you might want to do in an NGS uh, lab. Nextera XD, uh, SmartSeq2 for Takara, NEB kits, uh, B cleanups um, in general, because they are a very key component of many kits. Uh, QPCR, DNA quantification, and Kappa library quantification are all inbuilt um, into the software. Um, it you also have the ability to set up custom experiments. So with the help of your field application scientists, you can write a custom experiment which will appear on this home page, which might be the main work where you actually do it in the lab. So if you're at a, if it's a kit which isn't one of these ones listed, because this is only just a small part of the kits we've miniaturized, uh, you can have an experiment written which will serve your lab and um, be able to miniaturize the kits that you are actually interested in doing. Uh, when you open these software wizards, you get brought to a page where there's uh, plates uh, where you can modify and customize the experiment however you wish. Uh, in a, a video shortly, I will demonstrate this to you and um, show you how this works on the instrument itself. It's easy to set up a NGS library prep on the Mosquito by using our wizards. If you want to use the Mosquito for next generation sequencing library prep and we open up the software, we get introduced to this page, which has some default wizards for helping you write NGS library prep protocols on the Mosquito. You can customize these experiments and have ones displayed for whatever workflow your lab primarily uses. The one I'm going to do today is the NAB Next Ultra 2. And I'm going to choose the kit which has the fragmentation system included. We then get either we then have to choose the type of pitch we're going to use the mosquito, which is essentially the number of tips on display. So 16 in this case, a full column. We start on the run page, which has a full experiment already written and describes that to you here, explaining what it's going to be doing. However, if we want to customize it, we can start at this information page here, which has the title and another description of what is happening here. 
So this is a full plate protocol optimized for saving reagents, tips, plates, and time. In this protocol, we're going to be doing the fragmentation and repair and DA tailing, the adaptive ligation, and the user end run treatment of this kit. It describes you the type of plates you're going to be using here as well by default. Under the plates tab, we can customize what these plates are. By default, Eppendorf twin tacks are used, Eppendorf twin tack on cooling block, and a low volume serial dilution plate from SBT are used as just as default. You can change these by swapping them out here. Under the experiment tab, we have some options for how we want to customize the experiment. The miniaturization level is fixed, but the samples, you can modify the number here by simply reducing the number of columns that you have access on the plate. So if you're only running half a plate of samples that day, it's very easy to do. And then under the reagents tab, we can modify where those reagent columns go. For example, if I want the ligation mix to be on the right-hand side of the plate, I can easily do that. If I want it to be one last column to reduce dev volume, I can also do that. Then we go to the run tab and it'll give us all that information and then estimated runtime. To start the experiment after setting up the instrument physically with these plates and samples, you just need to hit run. Here is the mosquito distributing the fragmentation mix over the reaction plate. After we've done our initial library preparation and got the ends of the DNA prepared, we need to clean up the sample before going any further. And that's where we use the B cleanup. The Mosquito Software Wizard facilitates writing B cleanup software protocols from beginning to end. So like with our other um, wizards, it will give you a run page, which has all of the information on how the experiment will run. Unlike for the other library preparation I talked about earlier, in this experiment, you have to move this plate on and off the magnet at various points. The B cleanup, is going to have five plates. It's going to have the sample plate, the reagent plate, uh, the position for the sample plate to be on the magnetic block, a waste plate, output for purified sample plate after elution. Under the plates tab, um, we have all five plates here. You can change what type of plates these are as before by swapping them out and dragging and dropping them. And the experiment tab gives us the option of how we want to do this bead cleanup, what ratio of beads we want to use, the number of ethanol washes we want to do, whether you're doing the incubation with ethanol or not. Under the samples page, like before, we can choose how many samples we're running. It'll flag an error if there's something that's inconsistent about the experiment now, uh, usually because you have more waste wells than you need, for example. And then under the reagents and waste, we simply choose um, what Level, what columns we're going to use for our beads, ethanol, elution, and so on. So you just set this plate up with these reagents in these positions, and you're able to run the bead cleanup. Then we go to the run page, and once the instrument is physically set up, we're able to hit run. Now that we've set up the bead cleanup in the software and got the plates on the deck on the Mosquito, we can start the bead cleanup experiment. The mosquito has now added the beads to 384 of our samples. We now need to take it off the mosquito, vortex it, pulse centrifuge it, and then once, it's be in once the beads have incubated with the sample, put them onto the magnet for the ethanol washing steps. <laughs> So the mosquito added the ethanol and removed it. So doing the ethanol washes for the bead cleanup. Now we need to move the plate off the magnet so that we can add the elution buffer and resuspend the beads. Now that we've added the elution buffer to all 384 samples, we can take the plate and move it to the magnet one last time to ensure no beads end up in the final libraries. This is to show you the magnetization of the beads post elution.
Okay, so the NEB kit that I demonstrated in that video is just one workflow you can do. There are many other workflows and we have lots of technical notes and application notes about examples of these workflows using the Mosquito and other instruments as well if needed to uh, serve full NGS live prep from beginning to end. Um, we have various levels of militarization and um, we've operated in many uh, institutes with high throughput environments. We have over 40 NGS uh, methods militarized, and these are just some of the examples. A handout will be part, there will be a handout as part of this webinar, which will give you a list of more, compre a more comprehensive list, sorry, of militarized, militarized methods. Now we're going to talk about how, after we've talked about the mosquito and the return on investment and the um, militarization cost savings, how these actually lead to cost saving in your lab. The two examples I want to start with are the robust and well-known Illumina Nextera XT kit and the Illumina DNA prep kit. So these, kit, uh, these kits are, as of today, still very expensive and the index costs are very high too. However, with tenfold miniaturization, or in the case of Illumina Nextera XT, 12.5-fold, uh, which is actually what we've been able to achieve uh, consistently, is a massive reduction in cost per sample, saving you a lot of uh, money over time. In terms of 384 well sample plates, it only takes eight full plates to fully pay for the cost of a mosquito genomics in your lab, meaning that you will see returns on your investment fairly rapidly. In some labs, this sort of throughput is fairly normal um, in a matter of weeks. So this is um, able to pay for itself very rapidly. Next set of kits I want to talk about are the NEB kits. So the NEB Next Ultra 2 DNA kit with the FS module and so on. It's a similar story. These kits are very pricey and the index, kit, uh, index costs um, are also very high still. If you look at cost per sample and saving per sample, the return on investment is still very, very good. Um, you just, even though you're using mosquito tips, you're using these instead of normal tips and you're using the same plates. So we don't really consider that into the cost of mini, uh, cost saving of miniaturization. By the way, working in 384, you are saving costs instead of 96 as well. The final two kits I'm going to mention here in detail are the Takara SmartSeq V4 and SmartSeq SC kits. Uh, these are very expensive kits that they don't have a separate index cost and the savings here are also very fast and the return investment is even faster than for other kits. And with that, um, uh, I will pass back to the hosts and we will answer any of your questions.